Hi everyone, I'm Andy, and today I have a short video for you about a new type of autogen agent that was just released within the past few days, the Society of Mind Agent. As we know, Autogen is designed for creating and managing automated generative agents and conversations between them. The Society of Mind Agent makes hierarchical conversations and tasks easier to design, create, and manage. The Autogen documentation states that it runs a group chat as an internal monologue, but appears to the external world as a single agent. This has some advantages. It provides a clean way of producing a hierarchy of agents, hiding complexity as inner monologues. It provides a consistent way of extracting an answer from a lengthy group chat, and it provides a way of recovering when agents exceed their context window constraints because the inner monologue is protected by try catch blocks. So let's see a simple project that uses this new agent. By the end of this video, you should have a good overview of what the Society of Mind agent can do and how you can use it in your own projects. So here we are in Visual Studio Code. The first thing I'm going to do is press Command Shift P because I'm on a Mac and I'm going to create a new terminal. Next, I'm going to create a new conda environment for our project using the command conda create dash n give it a name, autogen underscore yt, and I'm specifying the version of Python that we're going to use in this environment, version 3.11.3. .3. And if I press the return key, what this is going to do is give me a list of things that it needs to install in order to create this environment and ask me if I would like to proceed. So I will say yes and hit return. That command has finished running, so our autogen environment has been created, and the next thing that we need to do is activate it with the command conda activate autogen underscore yt. The next thing that we'll want to do is actually install the pyautogen package into our new conda environment. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the command which Python 3. And what this is going to do is this is going to tell me exactly where on disk Python is installed in our conda environment. And so now that I know that location, I'm going to reference that installation of Python directly, and I'm going to use the command dash m pip install pyautogen. And the reason that I'm doing that is just to double, triple, even quadruple check that I'm not going to have any sorts of package management issues that might crop up in our conda environment. So I'm going to skip ahead to when this is done installing. Okay, so it looks like PyAutogen has finished installing. If you look right here, you can see PyAutogen 2.11 has been installed. Next, over in the Explorer, I'm going to right-click and create a new file called oai underscore config underscore list. And so this file is where we're going to put all of the API keys that we might use in our project. And just a note before we move on, I will be deactivating these keys before publishing this video. So now I can save this file and go ahead and close it. Now we're going to need a file for our project code. So over in the Explorer, I'm going to right click again and make another new file, which I will call societyofmind.py. I have some project code ready to go, so I'll copy that in here. And I'm going to resize the terminal so we can get a better look at the code. I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top, and as you can see, the imports for Autogen are all underlined in yellow. The reason for that, if we look down at the bottom of the screen, although in the terminal we can see that our Autogen YT environment is active, over here on the right-hand side of the screen, we can see that in Visual Studio Code itself, it's actually referencing our base conda environment. So I'm going to click here, and this will drop down a list at the top of the screen that shows all of the conda environments that I have on my system right now. So here's the Autogen YT environment that we just created. And you might not see this in your list. And if you don't, if you click on this refresh button up here at the top of the screen, this will refresh the list and reload all of the conda environments in your system and it should appear then. So I'm going to select the Autogen YT environment here, 
And if you notice the yellow underlines are gone, the text has changed color. And down here at the bottom of the screen, it now says that Visual Studio Code is now using the autogen underscore YT conda environment. The first thing to note in this code is that we have a new import. We are importing society of mind agent from autogen.agentchat.contrib.societyofmindagent. Next, we're defining an LLM config that we can use for the agents in this project. We're going to give it a timeout, a cache seed of none, so that none of our agents' conversations will be cached on disk. We are giving it a config list and a temperature of zero so that none of our agents get too creative with the responses that they generate. So for the config list, as you can see right here, we're loading that directly from disk, directly from our OAI config list file that we created earlier. And we're picking the GPT-4-1106 preview model and API key from our OAI config list file. Now I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And as you can see here, the next thing that we're going to do is set up a couple of autogen agents and put them into a group chat. We've done this in a previous video on this channel, and I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Just as a brief overview, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an Autogen Assistant agent called Assistant. We're going to give it a name of Inner Assistant because this is going to be one of the assistants that takes part in the inner dialogue inside of our Society of Mind agent. We're going to give it an LLM config and a mechanism to determine if the conversation is over. Next, we're going to define an Autogen user proxy agent. We're going to call it Code Interpreter, and we're going to give it a name, Inner Code Interpreter. This is another agent that's going to take part in the inner dialogue inside of our Society of Mind agent. We're going to set the human input mode to never, so this will run automatically. And because this agent is capable of executing code, we're going to give it a code execution config. We're going to give it a work directory where it can store its code and the results of the code on disk. And we're also going to say use Docker is false. The reason that I'm going to set use Docker to false is because recently Autogen introduced a change where all of the code that the agents execute is automatically executed inside of a Docker container. On my computer, currently I do not have Docker installed. So if I don't set this to false, my project will fail to run. And so because we've set this to false, all of the code that these agents generate and work with is going to execute natively on my system. I'm going to give the default auto reply of blank to the user proxy agent. And we're also going to give it a method to determine whether the conversation is over. The next thing we need to do is create an autogen group chat object. We will call it group chat. We're going to give it a list of the agents that will be taking part in the group chat. We are going to give it a blank preloaded message buffer with nothing in it. We're going to give it the speaker selection method of round robin, which because we only have two agents in the group chat, this is just going to alternate between which agent is speaking. And just to reinforce that, we're going to say allow repeat speaker equals false. And we're also going to give the group chat a max round of eight, just to limit the conversation scope in case things start to go off the rails. Now that we have our group chat object defined, we're going to create an autogen group chat manager called manager. We're going to give it a reference to our group chat object that we just created. We're going to give it a mechanism to determine whether the conversation has ended. And we're also going to give it an LLM config so that it is capable of intelligently managing the conversation. Now that we have all that set up, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. And here you can see something new. Here we are creating an instance of the Society of Mind agent called Society of Mind Agent. We're going to give it the name Society of Mind, and we're going to give it a reference to the chat manager that we just created. And the Society of Mind Agent is capable of executing code as well, so I'm going to give it the same execution config that we used for our inner user proxy above. We're also going to give the Society of Mind Agent a reference to the LLM config because Society of Mind Agent is a subclass of Conversable Agent. Now let's scroll down just a little bit more and we can see that we're creating another user proxy agent called user proxy. We're going to name it user proxy, set the human input mode to never. And this user proxy is not going to need to execute any code. That's going to happen inside 
of our society of mind agent. So this one does not need to do anything. So we're going to set the code execution config to false. We're going to give it a default auto reply of blank. And we're also going to give it a mechanism to determine whether the conversation has ended, which here we're saying is going to be true in any case. Next, we're going to set up a task for our society of mind agent to complete for us. What is tomorrow's forecast in a random city of your choice? Use a free API such as Open Medio. And then we're using our user proxy agent to initiate a chat with the Society of Mind agent, and we're going to give it our task. So let's see this code in action. I'm going to resize the terminal so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to save our project. I'm going to clear the terminal. And now I'm going to go ahead and run our project. And this is going to take a few minutes to execute, so I'm going to cut to when the project is done. All right, so our code has finished executing. So let's scroll up to the top and see what happened. The first thing to notice over here in the Explorer is that now there is a new directory called coding. And if we open that up, we can see weather underscore forecast dot py has been created. So right away, we know that our agents at the very least created some code. If we look at our program's output, the first thing that we see is the user proxy relays our task to the Society of Mind agent. What is tomorrow's forecast in a random city of your choice? use a free API such as Open Medio. The next thing that happens, the Society of Mind agent kicks off its own internal dialog. And the way that it does that is to relay our same task to the chat manager, which represents its internal dialog. So inside of the Society of Mind agent, the inner assistant begins solving that task. You can see that it comes up with a plan of action, and then it creates some code to accomplish the task. If we scroll down just a little bit more, we can see that the inner code interpreter has executed the code and collected the output from it. The next thing that happens is that the inner assistant says to the chat manager, here is the output that was collected, and then it gives the termination code, which lets the chat manager know that this conversation is over, and the inner dialogue from the Society of Mind agent has ended, and the control of the conversation needs to be returned one level up the hierarchy. And if we scroll all the way down, we can see the rest of the output. The Society of Mind agent relays the information that was obtained from its own inner dialogue, and then the conversation is over and the program terminates. So one thing to notice about this output is that we can see the output from all of our agents here in the terminal. And that's because all of the autogen agent types are designed to print all of their output to the terminal. However, at the beginning of the video, we said that the Society of Mind agent manages an internal dialogue that's not accessible to the outside world. And we can see direct evidence of that here in the terminal. First, the user proxy talks to the Society of Mind agent. And then the Society of Mind agent talks to the internal chat manager that it essentially serves as a wrapper around. We can see that the rest of the agents also talk to that same chat manager. At no time do we see the inner assistant talking to the exterior user proxy. You only see it talking to the chat manager and the inner code interpreter only talking to the chat manager and the inner assistant only talking to the chat manager. And that doesn't change until the conversation bubbles back up to the top level of the Society of Mind agent. And that's when the top level user proxy is addressed again. So there you have it. That's a very quick example of a small project done with the Society of Mind agent. I think that this is a very powerful new feature in Autogen because as we know, Autogen is designed to orchestrate conversations between agents. And this new agent type makes organizing conversational hierarchies so easy and so clear. This seems like it's gonna be a very powerful thing that you're going to be able to do a lot with. In this project, we just saw a simple hierarchy with a society of mind agent with a couple of agents underneath it, but there's no reason that those internal agents themselves could not be additional society of mind agents that are nested inside. You could easily have multiple nested levels of hierarchy in your conversation, depending on what your specific use case or needs are. So I'm going to post a link in the description to the original source material for this project. I'm also going to post a link to a gist of this exact project code so that you can try this out yourself. And as I said earlier, I'm also going to post a link to a previous video that we did on basic group chats with Autogen.
So have fun with this. Let me know if you come up with anything cool, and I'll talk to you next time.